Welcome to day 15, how to become a trusted and respected retail partner, a category leader. The Retail Solve Blueprint to teach you everything you need to know to confidently grow and scale your brand, build a connected community of loyal evangelists, and multiply your brand's impact, sales, and profits. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Dan Lohman. I've had the privilege of mentoring and working with hundreds of brands from pre-revenue to multi-billion dollars in sales. This is a culmination of the best strategies that are working today. I've spent years testing and perfecting them to save you valuable time and money while giving you the edge that you deserve. If you haven't done so yet, download the free 30-day guide to prosperity workbook at retailsolve.com. 30-day workbook to help you get the most out of this brand building series. Go back and listen to all the episodes in this masterclass so that you don't miss a thing. The strategies build upon each other in the order of the series. Please share these and help me raise the bar natural. I want to take a moment to recap the last episode. Identify your ideal retail partner, including online. In the last episode, I talked about the importance of choosing the right retailer, including online. One of the biggest mistakes that brands make, especially small brands, is that they focus on gaining distribution everywhere regardless whether it's good fit or not. This may seem counterintuitive since you're told that all distribution is good distribution, but it's not. Trying to sell your product where your customers don't shop is a huge waste of time and money. Having distribution in a retailer that doesn't value your ability to help them to grow sales can be a challenge. Start to build distribution, including with new item innovation, where it makes sense first, and then expand to other retailers and other stores when you're completely able to give the, your brand and that retailer support that they need and deserve. Remember, it's all about the customer. How easy can you make it for your customers to find and buy your products wherever they shop? Don't allow yourself to get distracted. Remain laser focused on your strategy. That leads us to today's episode. How do you become a trusted and respected retail partner, a category leader? I spent a lot of time on the podcast and throughout all my content talking about the value and the benefits of becoming a category leader. A category leader, by my definition, is any brand willing to step up and help guide their retail partner to grow sustainable sales by leveraging the strength of the unique customer that your brand attracts. This is radically different strategy than what you're taught in any business school or by any broker, agency, or distributor. I want to assure you that it works. In fact, Leveraging some of these same strategies that I share here is how I'm able to make an incredible impact for the brands that I've worked with as well as the brands I'm working with right now. It's fundamentally at the heart of what it takes to be recognized and tr as a trusted and respected indispensable retail partner, a category leader. As a quick reminder, there's a big difference between a category captain and a category leader. Committing to be a category captain can be extremely expensive requiring a commitment to provide dedicated tools and resources to that retailer. It's a good idea to let big brands assume the category captain role. If you do this right, a category leader might be even more impactful and more influential in supporting your retail partner. This is why savvy retailers will sometimes reward you with incremental opportunities not available to other brands. So what exactly do I mean by that? I've shared several examples throughout the 30 Day to Prosperity series. I've also shared several real-life examples on the Retail Solve podcast, including as I give free advice to my guests, where I help them solve their most pressing bottleneck at the end of every episode. To sum it up, continually scratching for more sales can be extremely draining, especially as you're trying to hit your target and your sales objectives. Imagine having a retailer call you out of the blue and ask you if you can provide incremental displays and promotions. I've actually had retailers call me repeatedly and offer me a free end cap, Within less than a week's notice, they reached out to me because I had proven myself as a trusted resource. Imagine what something like that would do toward you hitting your sales objectives. This is what we're shooting for. Being a category leader means first becoming an expert in your customer, the retailer's customers, and how they shop your category, and then how your brand influences their buying decisions. It's important that you understand how to get into the mind of your shopper. It's always a good idea to start with their need state. A need state is the purpose that drives the customer into the store. It's the problem that they're trying to solve. For example, someone with a runny nose is looking for cold and flu remedies. Their need state is cold and flu. For this customer, you want to group all the cold and flu remedies in a convenient, easy to find location. Focus on the shopper's journey. What can you do to make it easy for them to find and buy all their products that they need while in your store while they're buying your brand? 
When McDonald's asks you if you want fries with your burger, it's because they realize that they can make a lot more money selling you fries and a drink. What most people don't realize is that they hardly make any money selling the burger alone. Their success and their ability to remain profitable comes from recommending complimentary items. Doing this adds value to the shoppers and differentiates them from their competition. You should do the same thing to your customers. This is a great way for you to show leadership and your ability to help your retail partner grow sales. Think of the products that complement your brand and think about how you can create promotions to be a win-win for both you and the other brand. Don't just think about things that are simple like putting ketchup and mustard together. This is where your creativity can make all the difference. For example, parents with infants go out of their way to spend a premium on high quality baby food. This customer might be an ideal shopper for a brand like Once Upon a Farm. A lot of those same customers probably have older children at home that feel neglected now that mom and dad's time is focused on their new brother and sister. Foodsters is a company that sells healthy baking kits like brownies, cookies, and more. This brand is ideal for parents wanting to create memories with their children while teaching them about healthy nutrition. Merchandising or promoting both of these brands together would be a great way to build a deep connection with young families. This is also a great way to build a lasting relationship with future customers. Think of the creative things that you can do with your brand to help your retail partner compete more effectively in their market. Remember the three things that they want. Competitive advantage in their market, a reasonable profit, and sustainable category growth. Another great way to become an indispensable category partner is to provide actionable insights that other brands overlook or that retailers can't get on their own. This is why I spend so much time talking about the importance of your story and how your story needs to include deep level insights about the unique customer that your brand attracts. Big brands rely heavily on what they call shopper insights. They can be extremely expensive to purchase. Most companies that provide those shopper insights tend to commoditize shoppers, causing them to overlook your unique customer. This is where you have a distinct competitive advantage. If you haven't listened to every episode in this series, I encourage you to go back and listen to them again in order. In fact, listen to them as many times as you need, as each episode builds upon the previous one. Your ability to use these insights and these tips and tricks to grow sales will give your brand the sustainable competitive edge that you deserve, if you apply them correctly. One of the questions I frequently get asked by listeners is how did I learn these strategies? I created them by paying attention to the way customers shop and then by focusing on what matters most to them. Now I know that sounds pretty generic, so let me explain. After college, I held a wide variety of senior management positions in retail. At one point, I was the grocery manager for Price Club, which is now Costco. I was responsible for all the food items, including frozen, refrigerated, perishable, produce, meat, convenience, even the liquor store. It was a hard job with long hours, as most grocery managers will tell you. I learned exactly how customers shop and what influenced their buying decisions. Every day, my boss would walk the sales floor with me. I was expected to know in great detail how every product was selling, how they were performing in addition to my current inventory levels. I had to justify the products that I put on end caps and where I merchandised products. I completely re-merchandised the entire grocery department to make it easier to shop using what I learned. I group like products to address customer need states. This is well before category management was invented. I actually used a legal pad to create a schematic for the freezer section. The result was an instant increase in sales of over 252%. In fact, I almost quadrupled the sales in my department to well over $500,000 in weekly sales. This was back in the early 90s. That volume was virtually unheard of back then. One of the ways that I did this was by paying close attention to the way customers shop. Customers came in one door and went around what they called the racetrack. Every store has a flow that customers follow. I continually experimented with different merchandising strategies. Price Club was a club store where most of the items were sold right off a pallet. One of my experiments included moving the first can from the traffic facing corner of the pallet and placing it on the far back corner of the pallet. This made it look like the first row had already been sold and that shoppers were already digging into the second row. Sales exploded as a result. Conversely, I also experimented with keeping the pallet cubed. Sales dropped dramatically as a result. Consider this. If you have a full gallon of milk in the fridge, you're free to take as much as you want anytime you want. But if there's only a little bit left, then you want to save it for others so you drink less of it to conserve it and to make it last longer. 
This is why stores like Price Club are so effective, because they can convince you to buy larger quantities because they know that you'll consume them quicker if you have them at your fingertips. This is also why large count pack items are a great way to build incremental sales. As you begin to understand how your brand influences the shopper journey and how your strategies can impact sales, this will make your insights even more valuable to your retail partner. Think about the example I just gave you and how you can make it easier for customers to find and buy your products wherever they shop. More importantly, what can you do to help ensure that they find everything else on the list while they shop for your brand? Insights like these are priceless to a retailer. Also, this is how you get a significant and sustainable competitive advantage. Remember that your competitors typically rely on a rinse and repeat strategy. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This is why most brands have lackluster results. I've been capitalizing on these strategies throughout my entire career because I understood exactly what the retailer wanted and how to help them grow sales by leveraging unique strengths of the shopper that my brand attracted. I focused first on helping the retailer achieve their goals and they rewarded me for my efforts. The focus of 30 Day to Prosperity Challenge. For example, when I was a DSD driver selling potato chips for a small regional potato chip company, I used these same strategies to become a trusted and valued and respected retail partner. As a result, when the retailer opened a brand new superstore, they had a grand opening, and I was given a 4900 bag chip display in the front lobby, in addition to several end caps that I didn't have to pay for, while the number one national brand couldn't get a single display in the store. This is why these strategies are so important to your success. This is how you level the play field with the most sophisticated brands in your category, including those brands with really deep pockets. Keep thinking back to the three things that retailers really want and how you can deliver exceptional results beyond what your competitors do. I have millions of other stories that I could share. The main point that I wanted to make here is that you have a unique opportunity to control your destiny, and that begins with your commitment to become an invaluable resource to your retail partner. This will open doors and create opportunities typically available only to the biggest brands. This is even more important when you consider the impact of COVID on our industry. Retailers are struggling to remain relevant, meaning that they're striving to keep customers coming back in their store again and again, especially with online threats. In addition, a lot of brands are struggling just to keep their doors open. You have a unique opportunity to leverage these strategies and to give your brand a huge edge. I was supposed to give the keynote address to the Canadian Organic Trade Association at Expo West. The presentation was titled, How Do You Get Your Brand on Store Shelves and Into the Hands of Shoppers? When Expo West was canceled, I volunteered to give it on the free weekly webinar series that I launched to help brands impacted by COVID. The strategies I've been talking about here in this episode are the primary focus of the webinar. You can watch the replay at retailsolve.com forward slash OTA Canada. That free webinar complemented the How Do You Future Proof Your Store in Uncertain Times webinar. It was a collaboration with Whole Foods Magazine, and it was really well attended. In this webinar, I talk a lot about how brands can become an indispensable partner to retailers and how brands can help future-proof retailers, especially during uncertain times. You can watch the replay for this webinar at retailsolve.com forward slash future-proof your store. For additional inspiration, Listen to podcast episode Secrets 43, Been with Lucky's Market, Retail Done Right, Success Eagles Retailers Plus Brands Partnering to Satisfy Shoppers. At the time I recorded this podcast episode, Lucky's was a thriving retailer. They were doing everything right in my opinion. They were partnering with brands to make it easier for customers to come in and find and buy all the products that they wanted. You can learn a lot from this podcast episode. Since recording that episode, Lucky's unfortunately went bankrupt, but had little to do with their strategy. In my opinion, it had more to do with them trying to too aggressively open too many stores and markets thousands of miles away. Kind of reminds you what I said about getting into stores where you don't have the opportunity to support the retailer because they're too far away? Anyhow, in my opinion, they're an amazing store and you can learn a lot from them. In this podcast episode, we talk about the strategies that we're talking about here and how you can leverage those strategies to help your retail partner compete more effectively. Next, I recommend you listen to Secrets 41 with Robbie Vitrano, understanding what drives the beating heart of natural. Robbie's background is working with agencies, so he understands branding, and more importantly, he understands the importance of aligning your brand with your core customer. Robbie's a wealth of information. 
On this podcast episode, he shares a lot of examples about how to connect your brand with the community. Rob is one of the nicest people I've ever met, and he's also one of the most committed influencers in our industry. His passion and commitment to raising the bar in our industry is what makes the story so impactful. Secrets 41 with Robbie Vitrano. Understanding what drives the beating heart of natural. Next, I recommend you listen to Secret 77, Lee and Bill Keith with Perfect Bar, the perfect recipe for growth. Knowing your numbers plus authentic love for your hive. Lee and Bill are both brother and sister, and with, together with their family, they built a brand empire, focusing on delivering incredible products that their customers love. They call their loyal, enthusiastic customers their hive. Their authentic love for their hive translates into a huge opportunity to innovate and dominate the category. We also talked about the importance of knowing your numbers and how to leverage your numbers at retail and within your selling story. This is exactly what we've been talking about through this, this entire series. Secret 77, Lee and Bill Keith with Perfect Bar, the perfect recipe for growth, knowing your numbers with authentic love for your retailers. Tip of the day, retailers need and want your help. You hold the key to giving them a huge competitive advantage. Become an indis- indispensable, trusted resource and partner, and savvy retailers will reward you with incremental opportunities. I record the video, which has illustrations and additional information that I can't share on the audio podcast. You can watch a company video on the podcast webpage, and you can get there by going to brandsecretsandstrategies.com slash session 241. In tomorrow's show, we'll talk about how to use data analytics, the roadmap to future sales and profits. This episode will build on today's conversation. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next show.